Okay, we're not in the usual spot because um, technically I'm meant to be at work. We're at my house, um, but I got I'm so bored of them too. They they uh, it's becoming quite ridiculous. The rivalry between us all. We keep trying to take the Mickey out of each other and get in, get the better of each other. And it's I, I just wanted a break from them to be honest. Paul just goes on and on and on, and, and Will just goes on and on and on and on, and and you know. And welcome to episode six of the fourth wall. Anyway, so this is the fourth wall, and I'm going to take you through some little bits of editing because, as you know, I'm the geek, so I tend to do all the special effects and all of the, the high end editing. So um, I'm going to show you what I do. Um, so let's step into the software. Okay, so this bit of software here is actually After Effects. Now, After Effects is a high end special effects editing software. It allows you to do camera tracking, it allows you to edit green screen, it allows you to manipulate 3D compositions within real-time footage. It allows you to do sky replacements, which um, is what we're going to focus on today, and it allows you to do numerous effects using lots of different tools and it works in a very similar way to Photoshop. As you can see here, we have a layer, and at the moment that layer is, you can turn it on and off, just like you can in Photoshop, is the fourth wall image, just to introduce you to the show. Now, we don't need that, so I'm gonna get rid of that, and that leaves us with a blank composition. Okay, I've got updates. Okay, so we have a blank composition. Um, I'm just gonna quickly show you what this can do. So special effects wise, obviously um, some of you may have seen the BB-8 advert that we did, which goes something like this. So as you can see, we have a little BB-8 rocking, he turns on the lightsaber, he looks at our advert, and then it opens up and it says the fourth wall. Turn the sound off so it doesn't interfere with me talking to you at the same time. Um, so that's that. And that keeps repeating, so we'll shut that down. And then, obviously, you can not only just use it for creating 3D environments using plugins such as Element 3D, which is a, a plugin from Video Copilot, a great little plugin, but you can also use it for implementing 3D elements into real life footage. For instance, I've got a quick scene here. Um, yes, the sound's on again, but as you can see, we've got R2D2 in the actual scene in my garden. So, we're gonna not bother with this today. Um, we're not gonna do anything really heavy duty like putting in a moving 3D droid into the back garden where we film the fourth wall. Instead, we're gonna do a simple thing, sky replacements, because it's bland, look. Every time it goes up there, it's, it's a bland sky. Um, and this is a common problem, because when you're filming, the biggest issue you've got is you set up composition to match all of the colors in the scene. Um, and you use your exposure to make sure that's well lit and you have enough detail and more often than not that blows out the sky especially if you're not filming with high-end lights and um, and a proper setup so for us independent filmmakers we need to be able to be creative and this is where this comes into play so I'm just going to come out of that and we're back on After Effects okay so we have a composition here Hold on a second, I apologise about this. Hello? I need to put my hands on. Hello? Um, oh, Paul, yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm still at work. Uh, I'm just, just working. Well, it's busy. No, we're not going to have to do the episode tonight. I'm going to have to give it a miss tonight, I'm afraid. No, I oh, know. Well... Honestly, I'm working. I'm I promise. I, 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 yeah. 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 Mm. Right. That's us muted, so he can't hear us. But as you can hear, he's still going on. I'm sure he'll get bored and hang up eventually. Right, okay, so where were we? So we're, we're in After Effects. I'm just gonna quickly bring in a layer for us to work with. This lunchtime, when I was really at work, um, I 
went to my mum and dad's and I filmed a little scene in the garden just so we could actually do sky replacements today. Um, and this is one that we've just put the droid in. So I don't need the whole scene because there's a bit too much there. I literally just want to see as it pans up to the sky and back down again just to show you what this can do. So we've got a pan up into the sky. Moving camera always works. It helps sell the scene if you can get it to work. And then back down again. Okay, that's all I want. So I'm going to adjust my composition to match that. And then I'm going to trim my comp area. Okay, so now as you can see, up to the sky and down. Or if we go the right way, up to the sky and down. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, A, we're going to need two copies of this. And you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to click on the layer, press Control and D, and it gives me a second copy. The reason why I want a second copy is because I need to get the sky to shine through where the sky is. And I don't want to have to play with the whole layer because I'm going to be using color correction and certain techniques which would um, ruin the rest of the layer, especially where we have the highlights like in the statue here and around the window here and probably these little lights over here. So the way to do that is I need to mask out the bit that I don't want to be affected. So all we have to do is literally get a mask, I'll zoom out. And then if we turn the bottom layer off, because you'll see in the bottom bit because the bottom layer is still visible, so I'm going to turn that off and you'll see we've actually cut out all of the scene apart from the bit that we need. So let's just make sure that's there. Okay, now we need to animate this mask because the image is moving and the scene is going to move and I still want to make sure we stay on the bit with the sky. So I'm going to go into the mask options and I'm going to set a keyframe by hitting the stopwatch and as you can see it says a keyframe. Now a keyframe is a point of animation which leads to another point of animation. So if I was to scroll back we can see that it pans down. Now I want the foot, I want the mask to adjust as it pans down. So I'm going to grab the bottom of the mask and I'm going to slide it up and then as we pan between them two points you can see it moves with the scene which is perfect. So I'm going to go in and put all the keyframes in so we just get the sky in the shot. So um, we'll cut back when it's done. Okay, and we're back again. Okay, so as you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of keyframes in there now. And obviously from one keyframe to another, the mask animates. And that's how it works. So we now have just the sky selected. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, um, I don't like that sky because it's bland and horrible. I want to have a nice sky instead of that sky and I want it to shine through just a bit where the sky is and I still want to see all the lovely trees and all the greenery and all the roof of the sun, some house and this little ball up the top there. Um, so how do we do that? The way we do that is we create what's called a luma mat. A luma mat allows another image to see through the highlights of the image but is blocked by the shadows. So let's create this into a highlight and shadows image. We can do that using numerous techniques, but I'm going to use a program called Magic Bullet Colorista, which you can purchase from Red Giant. And it's Colorista 2. And I am literally going to bump the highlights. As you can see, it raises the whites. And I'm going to drop the shadows to start with. And as you can see, the shadows drop in. We've got all these mid-tones, which are kind of causing an issue, so if I drop the mid-tones as well, you should eventually see it all go black. Okay, so here we have a black and white image. Okay, next thing we need to do is put our sky for it. So how do we do this? We drop our sky in between the two, and we say, right, I want you to shine through just the top. At the moment, you can see the bottom half of the sky because we've got this whole layer block in it. Now that's because we have to change the layer style of the sky, because we want the sky to shine through the top and for it to be a luma mat. So we click on that, the sky now shines through the top. And if we then put on the name, main file again, as you can see, it brings all the color back. So we're using the, the one that we've just created as a luma mat, and we're saying shine through the white, and then we're turning that off because we don't need it visible, we just need the data to be read by the layer below it. And then the rest of the image is filled with this. So that's it. But look, as you can see, we do have a problem. Around these branches and this um, rooftop here, we have highlights which are spilling in. So we need to fix that. So let's start by fixing it as best we can by adjusting our 
Lumimat. So we go back into there, we go to the effects. What we'll start by doing is playing with the highlights. And as you can see, we lower them, it lightens them, we raise it, it darkens them. We've got to be really careful because as you, oh, I don't know if you can see, so let's zoom in closer. You can see the roof goes patchy. So we don't want to have it too high because we let stuff through. So we can't really go much higher than about that. That's as best as we can do with the highlights. What oh, about the shadows? Okay, all the same. We can adjust the shadows. We can bring them out, but then we start to lose the shadows in the roof. So we need to make sure that we don't do that as well. So we bring them back down until we can see everything. That leaves one thing, the mid-tones. So we'll play with the mid-tones. And again, we lose the mid-tones within the roof. So we don't want to do that. So we'll go into there and we'll edit it just so it's perfect. And here we go. That's as close as we're going to get with the key, which is pretty much where we had it at the beginning. So how do we get rid of the rest of these white bits and pieces? Well, the easiest way for me to show you how to do it today is to adjust the main image. And this will change the whole look of it. But we will fix that later and I'll show you how. So, hold on a second. Wait, wait a second, sorry. Hello? Oh, Will. No, yeah, no, no, um, no, four four tonight. No, I'm not doing that tonight. I, I can't. I'm stuck at work. I'm stuck. I honestly, I'm stuck at work. I know. I said I will. Paul's been on the phone earlier on. He, he just stopped talking about five minutes ago. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. And we're muted again. We'll just leave him there doing what he does. Okay, so we need to change this image. So nice and easy. We go into the main file, which is obviously this one here, this one that adds the colour. We're going to edit that. So if we go to Effect and we choose the same thing again, Magic Bullet Colorista or Levels and Adjust Your Colour with Curves, however you prefer to do it. Um, we're going to adjust this so it doesn't show up the highlights so much. So starters, we'll drop the highlights. And as you can see, that automatically gets rid of a lot of the problem. Okay, uh, we've lost some of the detail, so we're going to just play about with the effects a little bit, see if we can bring it back a little bit. So we don't want to lose it all. We'll drop the highlights a little bit more. We don't want it to be too bland. And let's just have a look at this tree over here. We've got some bits and pieces over there. How can we fix that? We can bring the highlights, the shadows down a little bit. Makes it look a little bit more crushed. Drop the highlights a little bit more. And then we've got quite a clean image. I'm happy with that image. That'll do for now. Okay, so we now have the sky behind the thing. Problem, I don't know if you can see it, is everything's moving, but the sky's not. Hmm, how do we fix that? Okay, this is where we use 3D camera tracking. So, we're gonna look at the main image again, and then I'm gonna track this. And what the 3D camera tracker does is it watches the, f the footage and it says, okay, these details were here, they were that big, and as the camera moves, this gets closer or further away from camera because it's growing or getting smaller, and it's moving left and right, and it analyzes all of the image, and it creates a virtual camera, which we can then use to manipulate that sky and make it move in a virtual world. So it's a lot, more com well, a lot less complicated than it sounds. To do that, we click on the layer, we go to Animation, Track Camera. It says it's going to ignore all the details, but that's fine because we only want to look at the footage, not all of the effects. So now that's doing its thing, I'm just going to quickly jump into here and I'm going to show you at the bottom here. Let's um, minimize Colorista so we can see what we're doing. We have an advanced section, and I know everyone stays clear, but with this box here that says detailed analysis, we want to be checking that. That gives us a fantastic um, track, or as best as it can. So I'll click on that. And this may take a while, as you can see, it is now on 1, 2%, 3%. So as with last time, I'm just going to pause this and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so welcome back. Um, as you can see, we now have lots and lots of little dots and a little symbol that moves around when we kind of hover over them. Okay, the reason that symbol's there is that symbol is to show us the planes that it's finding in 3D space. So. We don't have to go into too much depth on this, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to pick a plane where that symbol looks as straight as possible. And I reckon I want it aiming to the left a little bit because the camera's looking to the right, so we're going to go for that one there. 
So I'm going to click on that, I'm going to go to right click, and I'm going to create a solid and a camera. Now the reason why I'm creating a solid is because I want a box that is going to be the same as the sky. Because I want it when we bring in our sky image, I'm going to replace the solid with the sky. Now, it's nice and easy. All we do now is we go back to our project window. I'm going to take the sky layer and I'm going to pick whip it to the track solid. Actually, before I do that, let's just quickly make this a 3D layer. So, as I said earlier on, you have these track mats here. If you hit this toggle switch at the bottom, it shows you parameters on the layer, and we want the sky to be 3D. So it's now 3D and the sky has gone crazy. But I want to use this solid here as its position. So I'm going to hit the P key on the solid, click, click on the position, press Ctrl and C to copy that, go to the sky and paste it. And now we'll turn off that solid, we don't need it. Now the problem we've got is that the sky is going to be tiny. So we need to increase the size of the sky. So if we press the S key and we scale that up, then what that will do is that will scale up our sky. So we kind of drag for the footage where we can actually see the sky. You can see it's there. And the problem is it's slightly off. So we hit the anchor point and we just move the sky up. Put the clouds in the background. I have to make sure the sky doesn't go out of view. So how much play have we got? We probably need to increase the size of that somewhat. So we'll do that. We'll just increase the size a little bit more. So I'll click on the sky, press S for scale, increase the size a little bit more. Just scrub through, that's good, that's good, that's good. Now the problem we've got is the sky's gone on blue, which means that would have an effect on the actual layer itself and make the layer blue. So we can give it a certain color tint. You can use tint in here, but I don't tend to do that. I tend to use uh, another little effect called key correct and I use something called Color Matcher. And Color Matcher allows me to select a target layer that I want to match the scene to. And then, as you can see, it's made it all blue. And we can turn the blend up so it's affecting the scene, but not too much. So when we get a blue tint to it, I mean, this is it with it, and that's without. So while I do that, I'm just going to pause it, and I'm just going to refine that, and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so I've now adjusted the colour blend and I think I'm kind of happy with that blue tint that we've got now. There's still a few things that we can do to make this look a little bit better. We adjusted the image earlier on to get rid of them whites, which have now gone. Um, so I'm going to want to bring them back. But before we do that, there's one more effect I want to put in. Another fantastic bit of software that you can get, or plugin that you can get by Video Copilot again, is a bit of it's a plugin called optical flares we click on optical flares as you can see it has a real nice like um, sun glare effect and I'm just going to take optical flares and undo that again I applied it to a layer you don't want to do that so layer new solid put the solid at the top and then effect video code by optical flares Okay, and then we want it on transparent. Now, as you can see, we get a nice little sun. Now, we're going to make this 3D because we've got a camera tracker in there and everything's 3D. So, we might as well have a 3D optical flare. It'd be pointless not to, wouldn't it? Let's just turn the brightness up a little bit so we can see where it is. Where's the other end of that optical flare? Okay. I don't quite know where that's gone. There it is. Let's put that up here in the sky. So let's just move this around. It moves with the scene. It's quite bright though, isn't it? We don't want that there. We don't want it that bright. So let's um, take the optical flare position and just move it where we want it. I'm going to put it higher up in the sky. And I'm going to, I think it's to the right because it seems to be lighting the clouds to the right. So I'm going to take it over to the right as well. And I'm going to get rid of that that actual preset. I don't want that preset. If you go into lights, you do have lots of different presets. And the one I tend to like is real sun. So I click on OK on that. We get that. But look, it's way too bright. So let's draw it down. And I mainly use this to tint rather than to actually 
do anything else so I'm going to really push that out of the scene but just turn the brightness up so it's spilling into the scene as like a haze okay we'll go up there and that gives us a nice little sunny effect to it don't like these purple dots in there so if you go into the options on it you can actually remove the purple dot and go to OK and the purple dots have gone but that kind of does add a nice little effect to it we still see the flare it's still got an effect I'll show you what effect it's having if I turn it off here we go let's turn it off here and on again so here we get like that sun sunny glow from the far right so that's perfect one last thing I want to do is I want to put a final adjustment layer on it. So if we go to layer, new, adjustment layer, put the adjustment layer at the top. And we go into effects. And there's another great bit by um, Red Giant called Magic Bullet Looks. So if we go into there, it gives you a whole array of different styles. So you can go through them and choose what you want. So I'm just going to have a quick look to see what's in here. And I'm going to go... Have a look at the sharp one. The sharp one's quite nice, it sharpens everything. But I'm gonna go with something a little bit more movie themed. Um, number 85. Finish. So, as you can see, that really pushes, it crushes the blacks a little bit more, but it keeps our sun in there, and that really does bring the scene back in. So, now there we have it. We have the final scene with a sky replacement and that's a quick way of replacing the sky a very quick edit but it shows you what we've done so if you if you like this video please subscribe sorry it went on for so long it's a lot longer than usual and um, if you want to see any more special effects or find out how they do in the movies um, just remember to comment below and ask Steve and I will show you how it's done thank you very much